Welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Steve Hughes. I'm a principal consultant here with Pragmatic Works. And today I want to talk a little bit about um, Azure Storage. So it's kind of funny because we all talk about storage. And I, I often introduce customers to Azure through storage because I think it's a great way to leverage cloud assets in a fairly um, non uh, a really good way, right? So it's not it's not a it's not scary, right? You can get in the cloud, you can use storage for a variety of things. However, the storage capacity or the storage components of at Microsoft has begun to change. In Azure, we now see that there are three types of storage, and that's what I really want to talk about is kind of how you can use storage as you start to look at uh, using Azure more effectively in your organization to support whatever you're doing. So let's look at Azure Storage. And, we're, and specifically today, we're going to talk about Azure Blob Storage because the three types of storage apply to Blob Storage only at the moment. Um, first of all, is what's called Hot Storage. Kind of funny. Hot Storage is the original Azure Blob Storage. You put data into a Blob Storage account. You're able to access that data. And, you know, there's SLAs around it. You can actually um, put some redundancy around it and get even better SLAs. So you have a lot of option in storage um, from that access. So when we talk about these types of storage, a lot of it has to do with how often I want to access that data, um, how quickly I want to access that data, and kind of what its role is. So when we look at hot storage, it's really the, it's kind of the premium type of storage. It's not premium storage, let's be clear. But it's a, it is a great blob storage op option that allows you the kind of the standard storage options. Um, I'm going to accept files from a customer as a part of my e, uh, data warehouse load, or you know, I just want to drop some files up there to to keep in place for a while. It gives me the basics right away. So now I have blob storage. I can go access it. I can read and write from that storage area pretty easily, and, and I'm getting the best performance around for that. Next, they introduce cool storage. They introduce cool storage in order to introduce some cost reductions into the environment. And what that allows you to do is actually use it for things like backups, things that, um, think of it in terms of a high availability backup scenario. So if I, if I back up and I want to have that available to me and I put it into Azure Storage, but I'm not going to read it, I don't need the performance around read, I'm not going to get it all the time. But I still need to be able to get to it. And when I get to it, I, I, want to, I don't want to be slowed down by anything when I do that. So cool storage is a great opportunity to store data um, that doesn't need to be readily accessed all the time because where you get hit with this is not the performance, it's the price. So it's a lower cost storage option, but it does require you to pay more for extraction of that data because that's where Microsoft is using to manage the cost of the storage. So as you start to work through that process, you can say, okay, I want to put a, my backups, say my, my last two months of backups so I can recover data. I can get to the data quickly. It's not a restricted. Um, if I need to get to it, it'll cost me more to get to it and recover it, but it's still better than nothing, right? So I don't need to pay the premium because I don't need access to it all the time. Um, and I pray for the hot. It's not, you know, as we go into the last one they introduced, they just introduced something called archive storage. The big thing about archive storage is it's an opportunity to store your data in a way that you don't plan to access it anytime soon. Uh, they talk about on their blog post about it's going to be 180 days old or, or older. Realistically, this is truly archive, because when you put the data out there, you're not planning to get it back out. It has no read access, so it's basically write-only storage area. I'm going to put data into it, and I'm going to leave it there. If I need to get that data back out, I actually have to change a storage account type. This is not something that happens quickly. So as a part of any type of solution around that, you're going to look and realize that I need to put how many hours into recovering that is my window. So a full board disaster recovery or compliance and auditing, i got to retain 10 years of this data, but I'm never going to open it. Or if I do, it's not something I'm going to have to open tomorrow. Even if I get audited, you know, it's going to take three days to get the information back. It's there. Um, in all these storage mechanisms, you have the ability to essentially get your offline storage for whatever you're doing. So from a backup and recovery standpoint, um, it gives you that safety. And from a, just an overall um, for your organization, understanding those three types of storage options you have available to you just from accessibility and cost and performance is a big deal. These storage areas will allow you to better utilize your uh, overall Azure spend and be able to have, you know, store more data for longer periods of time without having to incur hardware costs or really, you know, reducing the penalty in overall storage. 
So thanks for listening today. If you have some questions about how you can better utilize the storage in Azure, and if you have questions about any of these storage types and how we can help you um, get started on Azure in particular, click the link below for more information. Thanks again for joining us in Azure Everyday. Have a great day.